This is a Celebration 125 podcast. I was talking, Cliff, to John Ten Bomber of the Agassiz Barbershop, and he was telling me about his time as a barber in Agassiz. And then he said there was a fellow that was in couple of years before him, back around 90 to 92, somewhere in there. But prior to that, you were the barber in Agassiz. I started up the barber shop, or John is. I started it up in 1975. I had a beauty parlor and barber shop called the Agassiz Hair Center. And I sold it December 1989. Stuck around for another month to, to help the new owner adjust it. So that's how long I've been retired, 1990. And by that time, John, President Barber, yeah, he came, uh, he came along. He used to be in the mission. And actually, <laughs> I forgot to mention that his brother started barbering, and he apprenticed under me for three weeks, John's brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because John's brother is a barber in Chilliwack now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he started with me. He was apprenticed for a year. He spent three weeks in that's when I uh, was selling out. He offered to buy the shop, but I couldn't let the shop go because he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready to uh, want to leave my customers in his hands, you know, until he was ready. Of course, it was in mission. Yeah, the guy that bought the shop from me, he moved to Quinnell. That's when John bought the shop. That's uh, how he got to be there. What is your background, Cliff? Prior to being a barber in Agassiz, are you from Agassiz, or where were you living before? I was born in Norway Valley, Alberta, uh, just up the hill from Heinsberg. You know where Lloyd Minister is? Yes. I was born in the crow flies, about 35 miles northwest of there. Okay. Yeah, I lived in Alberta for about five years, so I, I know quite a bit about it. What part? Well, I was in Lethbridge and Medicine Hat, but I also had friends in Edmonton and Fort McMurray and so on. So I got around to see quite a bit of Alberta. Yeah, well, I spent 19 years in Edmonton before coming out here. And you were a barber there as well? I took my apprenticeship there by training mm-hmm. at the Northern Institute of Technology, NEAT. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I the second one to enter the school. So I was the third one. Two guys entered that day before I did. It was a new school. And that was the second one to graduate from the school. Yeah, that was in 1963. Then I went from there. Uh, I was supposed to apprentice in Edmonton for a year before they gave me my license. But a salesman came in. I, I, I uh, was in his barber shop one morning. He said, they're looking for a barber in full air. So it's 40 miles south of the town of Peace River. And... Uh, 265 miles north of Edmonton. So I went, took a trip up there to see what the country is like and all that. There was no barber. Well, I could say from 40 miles, Peace River. So I moved in. Took my apprenticeship up there by myself. <laughs> but in, but in the, next, uh, the next fall, I guess it was, I went into Edmonton and to write my exam. He uh, just came over to the chair and he said, where are you going to set up shop? <laughs> I didn't dare tell him I'd been practicing by myself for a whole year. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the game of my license. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how I got started. Yeah, okay. And I came out here, of course. What brought you out to BC? What brought me out? Yeah. Well, moved my family to uh, Full Air. January, I guess it was, and there was uh, 68 below. It was out in the farmhouse. That was all I could get for accommodation. My wife and seven kids. We dug on the frozen to death. So farmhouse. So when my sister was living out in Chilliwack at that time. My dad had my dad had passed away the, that spring, and we were corresponding back and forth. She said, "Why don't you move out here?" Going to freeze to death up there. So, talked to Flo, and she uh, said, okay. So, we did. We came out here. She 
got a house for us in Chilliwack. We moved in November the 1st, 1965. And we've been here ever since. It was the best move ever made. <laughs> well, you won't get 68 below anyway. Yeah, with, with all my kids. Of course, in, uh, that was a 65. In 1968, I bought the, the restaurant in Rosedale. Across the river here. Mm -hmm. You know that old, well, I don't know what they call it now, but it's across the street there from the field post office. Well, just at uh, Yale and McGrath. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I bought that, and it was, being, it was going to be torn down. Anyway, this old lady at the old factory, everything in Rosedale at the time, she talked me into buying it, and uh, I did. I hired a, a fireman, a full-time fireman, who, who uh, did some carpentry work. I showed him what had to be done there and make it into a cafe and a barbershop. So he charged me four bucks an hour, and six months later, I had a, I had a barbershop and cafe. That was November the 6th, 16th, 1968. So, it worked out real good. All my kids got their training from the shop, really. The barber shop was the best thing I ever did for them. 1974, I sold it. I paid 14900 for it. In 1964, I sold it for 64900 I didn't do too bad on it. <laughs> did your kids go into barbering or the cafe business or both? So my uh, oldest girl, my oldest daughter, went into, she was a beautician. Mm -hmm. She just retired here last year. The rest of the boy, I do boys and five girls. My oldest boy took a uh, bakery. He, is a, he took his last test, I think it was, uh, he was in Winnipeg, and he got his license. He just wanted to get a, a, a apprenticeship or some kind of, you know, some trade. Mm -hmm. He was looking ahead a little bit. Oh, a second boy took up cooking. He ended up owning a cafe in Chilliwack. So he sold it here. When you had the barbershop in Agassiz, I guess, uh, needless to say, if you were running it for that many years, you get to know all the local people, don't you? Everybody got to know me. Mm -hmm. I can't, can't walk anywhere without anybody, you know talking to me or calling out at me. Yeah. I made, you know, I made a lot of friends here. So I guess there were, uh, at least among the men, there were a few mares that you cut their hair for, right? Eh? I went through, I think, five or, or six mares, I guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you get the yeah. school kids and the teachers and everyone, eh? Oh, yeah. So one of the school teachers, my grandfather, and he was 12 years old. I was cutting his hair. That was the grandfather. Yeah. And he still teaches school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, they they were treated really well here. You know, I didn't really when I retired, I didn't really miss the work as much. It was the people. The people that I missed. I made, made a lot of friends. That's a lot of great socialization there, eh? I mean, just yeah. telling stories and uh, hearing. Bits of gossip sometimes. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, and the thing is, before I started, I just started farming until I was, I got uh, my first shop at 36 years old. So it's quite late in starting. In the meantime, between, I started out working when I was 14, 13, 14 years old, back on the prairies, you know. I didn't even finish school, which I should have, but I didn't. I went, uh, started when I was eight years old, going to school, and I quit when I was 14. Well, I turned 15, a couple of days after school started. Got my grade eight through. So it was six years that I passed the grade eight. Well, way advanced uh, uh, in my schooling when I started school because of being uh, trained at home. We were way out in the bush close enough to school to walk, you know. Mm -hmm. So I had to be boarded out first year or so at eight years old. They had to board me out for a year. <clears throat> then we moved, we moved and got close to school. Then I, I walked the rest of the time.
time. Yeah, two and a half miles. Pulled back through the bush. Yeah. Before you were barbering, uh, what kind of work were you into? I started out. Uh, uh, I left home. I left home at sixteen. Yeah, I left Billy Minster. They came out to Penticton in 1947, 46, 47. Uh, I never did go back to it. I had enough of that farm work. So I go home from farm work with misery. Back in those days, it which came out of the 30s. Yeah, 1944, 43, 45. Yeah, 45. There's like, you know, things are just hardly starting up again after the war. So I had a hard time adjusting to poverty. I didn't want that anymore, so I left and uh, went into a lot of jobs. I did uh, logging a couple of months, and I worked in sawmills and a dairy farm out in uh, the Okanagan for a year, two years. I did just, just about everything. Picked apples. I did everything. And I drove cab, the yellow cab, in Edmonton for 10 years. Part time. I drove trucks in the daytime and Cab at night sometimes, you know. So when did the light bulb come on in your head and said, hmm, I think I'll be a barber? What happened was I had TB. I got TB from my first wife. She died after about 10 months after we were married. Then I contacted it. Spent nine months in a week in the sanatorium in Edmonton. What happened was I was at this job. I was taking treatments because I had two holes in my lungs. And it took two, two and a half years, I guess. So I've treated for the holes, uh, the holes cleared up and uh, able to breathe again. But when I, when I left the uh, sanatorium, they wondered what I, what I could do. Uh, I don't know if you remember mobile checking, checking units, X-raying people out in the countries. Red deer was a uh, dividing line. South of Red deer was a one for a Calgary area. Mm -hmm. and north of Red Deer was the Edmonton one, you know. So, anyway, they had an application sent out, an application for x ray technician assistant. The superintendent of the, of the hospital told me about it. He said, Well, don't you apply for it? A couple of these before I left the sanatorium. He said, Why don't you apply for it? He said, It would be the ideal thing for you while you're healing, while you're taking these treatments. I did, and on 11 I was selected. I went working on the mobile testing unit. It lasted seven and a half months, and we couldn't find a uh, x-ray data, I don't forget that, 147,000 in Edmonton alone. But, you know, of all those x-rays, we, I think we only picked up one, one case of TB. When I started, we, we, they were out at Jasper. It went as far east as the other side of Vegabool. They shut her down. Shut down the, the unit. The, by that time, the Abarth Memorial Hospital in Edmond opened up. So they sent me there. And I went to X-ray. The lady upstairs next to me in the operating room wanted me to go work for them. So I spent two years in the operating room there as an orderly. And by that time, being an outdoorsman, I just hated the inside work. I didn't hate it, but I mean, I just, uh, I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. So I took off from there. We went trucking for a while. Those L transport, one of them, Kingsway Transport. Didn't like that either. It was too toxic. I hurt my back. I could get it back to my back. I, uh, at 17 years old, they hauled me in from. Oh, Athabasca, oh, camp there. And they brought me in my truck to Edmonton. My back went on me, let's put it that way. And I spent 10 days on a board, just a board and a sheet in the General Hospital in Edmonton. And the specialist told me then that I had this problem with my back. It was uh, disintegrating. The, the type of work I was doing. So he said I would look for something else. So anyway, I was pretty disappointed about this. You know, because I either uh, an operation or a wheelchair. So he said if you uh, got out of 
the kind of work we have to, you could maybe skip the wheelchair. So I did, I went, oh, I was, pardon me, I was walking down the street one morning, and I ran into this guy on the sidewalk, and we were talking, and I had to look up, and there was a barbershop, a training school. So I started talking to him about barbering. Uh, what's it like, what's up? Well, he told me, he says, you know, barbers are a dime a dozen, but good ones are hard to find. I thought, well, maybe it is a challenge here. My mother cut my hair until I left home. So I guess it was in me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it over, and then, so oh, maybe four or five days later, I found myself in the, with the training, the training with the government. People look after Board of Education. Okay. Yeah, they had a building there on 97th Avenue, 105 Street. Uh, phone number, he says, made, a, made an appointment to talk to him. And he's a very nice guy. By that time, I had five kids. I told him what, my problems, you know, all my uh, back problems, went out, everything. And I guess he would smell sorry on me for me because he told me about me to opening up this school. A big city, he says, and uh, we do have a training school there. They're going to open up and uh, be in a parlor. So he said, Why don't you put your name, your name in there? So I did. I, I made up the form right, right before him and added it to him, and he stuck it in there. Well, a week later, I get a call. Come in and see me. I think I can do something for you. So I went in there. <laughs> he get, hands me this letter of acceptance. He accepted me in my application. So that's how it started. So that's how you became a barber, yeah. Yeah, that's how it started. Yeah. Yeah. from the education department got me in there. And you know what? About to, uh, there was 11 barbers. And um, in this, in this uh, place, I guess it was maybe three or four days later, and my chair and the uh, instructor came over. He was just a young fellow, about 23, 24 years old, and he, he got hired for the job as an instructor, barber instructor. And he came over to me and he says, How are you doing? I'm good. Well, he says, I. When you say good, I can see. I can see where you're going. I said, where? I said, you better the door. He said, you're a natural. You're a natural barber. Oh, that made me feel good. Anyway, it was, uh, I guess, maybe three, three months later or so, he was from Lethbridge. He had to take off his day, I think. And uh, he had to go that day, and he'd be back the next morning. I forget how he went, but he said, "Will you look at look at after things?" Well, I'm gone. <laughs> he left me in charge for those two days. <laughs> <laughs> so that told me something there. And trust me, that's the way it went. Never, I took off and never looked back. Well, Cliff, uh, you had a wonderful career as a barber, and of course, you've had a a great life in. Agassiz all these years, and uh, we really thank you for taking the time today to uh, share your life with us. Oh, no problem.